Good day, fellow investors. So yesterday we discussed the 100 businesses from the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF, and one of those is Newmont, and I said I'll do a detailed analysis on it because it is very interesting and there is a lot to learn, and we'll also add it to the YouTube portfolio. So as you can see, Newmont, the stock was extremely volatile over time, and that's normal. When gold prices are high, people are excited and flock into it, but then when gold prices go lower the companies do less make less money the investments that they made in the peak look terrible and everything goes down so there is always the potential that this goes down 75 percent that's something you must always expect it's actually a given and now from the exuberant peak that we have seen just recently we are already down 35 percent however i don't think we'll get back to the lows here of course it depends on gold prices oh we can get to the lows here easily if it gold goes a little bit down then we can get to here maybe we will not get to these lows that were extreme in 2015 16 when gold was going even below 1000 if i remember correctly so this is very interesting now. I think that we are now at medium risk, medium reward. Here, it would be lower risk. So these are levels 30. So that's another 50%, 40, 50% down very easily. This would be, let's say, something that it starts to look very interesting. But before discussing the entry points and how much sizing in a portfolio and how that works, let's just look at the business. So world-class assets, top-tier jurisdictions, they merged to get this African and global expansion. So nothing wrong. 8 million ounces of gold equivalent ounces produced for the next eight, nine years. So they are investing to keep that production for longer. Really, really big company. Nothing wrong. There will always be issues with some things, uh, cost pressures, uh, this and that. But it is what it is. It produces that much gold. And that is Newmont, pretty stable. There are the reserves there. They are investing, of course, to sustain production for the subsequent 10 years. So they want to keep that stability of production for the long term. That's their plan. So you can see a little bit down here. Then when other projects kick in, very well diversified so even if something happens at one of those positions should not impact that much the business now the total all in sustainable costs of production are around 1000 you always see they always expect these costs to go down but if we have inflation if we have this that don't expect that so always take this is the number perhaps even higher so 1100 to put things into perspective and 1100 means that they make 700 600 dollars in profit on every ounce that they produce 8 million ounces times 600 how much is that 8 times 6 i'm slow with math so around 5 billion dollars in operating cash flows from their production they are investing, of course, in uh, organic growth, returning cash to shareholders and maintaining financial stability, working on their debt. They say their cost of debt is not high, but this is not high for gold miners, but can quickly go higher if gold prices go lower. So it's always very volatile with that. And then if you look at the company, I said 5 billion and what is their free cash flow at current gold prices 1800 they make 2.4 billion in additional cash flows incremental cash flows from their production so nothing wrong there that's their base expected cash flow not that much at 1200 they don't really make any money. Yes, all in sustainable costs are 1100 but then add other costs, exploration, this or that. So they don't make money. 2.4 billion additional free cash flow at current prices, likely now 2 billion. So that's something to compare to the market cap. But of that, they pay dividends with higher gold prices. They expect to pay more dividends, less with lower gold prices and maybe just one 
if those uh, gold prices go back to 1,200, 300, which means also the stock will go to 20 or 34, a small dividend yield. It is so much noise about this, so you never know what the market will want to expect from gold. The first quarter wasn't as stellar. There were some issues, productions, uh, lockdowns, whatever. So that's always something that can happen. They paid the dividend, they have the cash, but free cash flow was a little bit subdued. And if I look at what they do, their cash flow here, so Gold all-in sustaining costs, we calculated 5 billion. Then if we deduct the 1 billion of sustaining capital, that's 4 billion. And then if we deduct 2 billion for growth, we are at 2 billion in free cash flows at gold 1,800, which is what Newmont produces. Then they say later the expenditures for growth will go lower, but then they will find something else. Trust me, this is just marketing because they need to then produce in 2040, 2050, and it takes five to seven years to ramp up a mine. That is the plan at current gold prices, let's say 2 billion in free cash flows. And if you want to dig deeper into how they calculate the all-in sustaining costs, you can just pause here, increase it, Net debt, they have that 5 billion. Okay, maybe not that significant, uh, especially with the cash they have, but okay. And what I wanted to compare now for valuation is 2 billion, and let's compare it to the market capitalization of 43 billion. So the price to free cash flow, 43 billion, 2 billion is uh, 20. 20, which means that the total return from Newmont at current gold prices is around 5%. Not stellar, not great, not bad, 5%. And then, of course, it all depends on where gold prices go. If gold prices explode on the upside to free 4,000 because of inflation, they will make more money, so the dividend will be higher and the stock will also double. If gold prices go lower, the stock will halve because that's simply how the market works with debt. Now, from an investment perspective, I wouldn't put my wealth into this because I don't want to gamble on uh, gold. But from a Ray Dalio all-weather perspective and learning how to approach this, I am sure going to put something for our YouTube portfolio so that we at least follow one gold stock in the portfolio and then maybe who knows when things look really bad in the gold environment dig deeper so for that mental training and also to learn more about the way to make money on gold miners no matter what because gold miners i love them for their volatility and that's what we play on here so we are on our comparative table that you can download for free. I have added Newmont here and you can see cash flows 2 billion, intrinsic value is 20 billion. So we are still pretty expensive compared to the market cap of 43 billion. If free cash flows go to 3 billion, then it's already something. So gold has to go up another 300, 400 for that to happen to Newmont, but then it would be fairly valued and the stock price will follow. So this is a play on volatility, but keep in mind it can go even much, much lower if the market starts hating it. Anyway, I have added it to the portfolio and here is the transaction. So for now we have bought one, two, three, four, five stocks. Let's say four normal positions from a valuation perspective. We can buy between 10,000 and 50,000 depending on the risk and reward. Now, when it comes to Newmont, this is, as we said, the gold play. So we have to accept a lot of volatility. How much do I want to buy of Newmont now so that I can add more if it goes lower and even more if it goes lower? As said, I don't think it's going to go as low as it was in 2015 when it was. So that is a little bit too low for my thinking, can happen, but unlikely. So I want to really see at where to buy and how much. As we've seen, we are now close to the yearly lows. So I think I should start here with 
we can go between 10 and 20,000. Let's start with 15,000. Then if it falls 25%, 30%, we'll add another 15,000. And then if it goes down another 25%, we'll add another 15,000. When it rebounds, we simply go back to that. So I have to buy 15,000 of Newmont. That's around 270. Okay, 272. So 15,000 buy now, transmit, and we have to see whether the order is filled. There we go, order filled at 55.18, and now we have Newmont here. So it will all be about the strategy, and if Newmont goes now here, we have opened the position at 40, 45, 40, we can double the position, then increase it again if it hits 20 something, and then just patiently wait. There should be some dividends, there should be something. Then if it now jumps from 50 to, let's say, 84, then I will bring down the position. I will sell the 84 and bring it down to the same exposure that I have now. Then when it goes lower, higher, this is all weather investing for gold. So I'm ready to buy twice more. I'm ready to sell if it goes higher. I have exposure to gold. It's always interesting to follow. It will be great content on YouTube. So I hope you really enjoy this. The risk and reward is there. So uh, I think it's much more important the volatility play than the quality of the business. Of course, you will not get a 20% dividend from gold miners, depending on where gold goes. But Gold is unpredictable, a lot of noise, so you can't predict. But the best way is to play on volatility, and that's what we are going to do this. So uh, thanks for watching. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And check what I do if you're interested in the core businesses that I own on my research platform. I'll see you in the next video tomorrow, ADM.